and welcome to The 5%. I'm your host, Jaya Davis. Tonight's topic, healthy living. Joining us, we have Alyssa Gregory, broadcast journalism major and member of the Penn State Sports Night. Mitch Strausser, security and risk analysis major and co-host of After Hours. Robert Perez, senior marketing and media director of the Council of Commonwealth Student Governments. How are you guys today? Good. Good. Oh, good. You guys look so nice. Thank you for coming on the show. You know, first episode. I'm excited to have you guys. Thank you for having us. Oh, no excited. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> guys excited? Super excited. <laughs> All right. Well, our first question is, what factors contribute to weight gain for college students? Why do you think so many first-year students gain the freshman 15? Give yeah, us. come on, Robbie. <laughs> Give us What's this. cheap is my kind of thing, so I'm going to go for whatever is cheap and fast. Who has time to wait in line for food? Nobody. No Nobody at all. Gosh. But, like, I mean, I just feel like being a freshman in general, like, you're starting off, you're away from home. So when you're home, you're used to, like, your family cooking, and you know what's going into your food, and everything's fresh. I don't know about you guys, but, like, my mom always had, like, fresh groceries, and it was never, like, canned goods. It was, like, just fresh stuff. But once you get up here, it's milk. Swipe, swipe, swipe. <laughs> like, you know, like, no points and swiping and burgers and everything like that. So I think that plays a huge factor in it. Yeah, like as a freshman, I think it has a lot to do with freedom. I mean, you're not home. Your mom's at home like, all right, well, if you don't finish your vegetables, then you can't get the cake. Here, I mean, you can come into Commons and just have cake for dinner. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it has to do a lot with freedom and like what you can get access to. And here you can get access to like anything. You know mm -hmm. how the creamery is. Yes. That could be dinner within yes, itself. Yes, exactly. So. I remember um, being a transfer student um, from another Commonwealth campus. I had got up here and I was at the creamery all the time. You know, it's all those flavors. Yeah. For everybody knows the creamery, <laughs> it's so many flavors. So it's like every day I was going for a new flavor and I was just like, oh my gosh, the creamery. So like, I'll be like, all right, do I want dinner? Or do I want to go to the creamery? <laughs> like, Same. you know, It'll so it's you. like so much temptation, but. And I think there's some overlap too, because you know, if you don't have access to unhealthy food, you're not going to eat mm -hmm. unhealthy food. But I think there's some cur cultural side in that we kind of are into not having impulse control. We're mm -hmm. kind of into like, yeah. yeah, let's go get crazy. Let's go to the dining hall and eat mm -hmm. 12 pounds of ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, so when no one's kind of holding you in check, you and your friends are like, yeah, let's eat an entire pizza. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's discipline. Discipline plays a huge role when it comes to um, how you're eating in college. I know freshman 15, that wasn't my thing. It was freshman 30, so, and that was just me. I was, um, <clears throat> my sophomore year actually, I was an RA at my campus and I had a meal plan and I was just swiping away and always eating in the dining hall instead of, and I had a kitchen and everything. I could have easily went and got food. But I think it's harder when you're in a dorm because you don't have that kitchen. So you do have to, if you're not on campus eating unhealthy food, you're going and buying, buying Hot Pockets or other processed foods. So I do wish that there was a little bit more healthier choices on campus, but I mean, there are, you just have to look for it and wait in line for that salad or, you know, it, who wants to wait in line for a salad when you can just grab, you know, something that's already yeah. done, mm -hmm. hot and ready for you. Yeah, and I feel like stress has a lot to do with it too. Like, who wants to eat healthy food when you're stressed out? True, yeah. that's true. And especially your workload, you're getting, when you come in as a freshman, you're already off the bat, what, like 15 credits, 15 to 16 credits. So your workload is heavy, you're getting adapt, you're homesick, so you're eating a lot, you know, especially people that come here from different um, countries and uh, different states and they're not near home. Robbie, aren't you like from a different I'm state? from LA, I'm f yeah, from California. California, yeah. so it's like, you're not used to like just being by yourself. I mean, I'm not sure about you, but you know, it's not not used to being by yourself. Some people are forced into the independent life. So it's like, you're just gotta adapt and get what you can, basically. Kind of off what you're saying, it's a lot of what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. For people who have either been trying to lose weight or have been conscious, when they come, it's not a huge change because they've already been considering, you know, what am I eating, what's going in. Mm -hmm. But if someone didn't really have that concern before and now it's, I have an exam tomorrow, I have three homeworks due, then the eighth slice of pizza they grab isn't what's sticking out and like being pertinent. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And like branching off of what he said, it's also like you want to reward yourself. Okay, I did homework for these three hours. Let me go get some cookies. I mean, do you need to reward yourself seven days a week? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you always have homework. So 
it definitely is like stress will like want you to, you know. You're right. Meal plan works in a lot of different places. Lion Cash does work like yeah. um in like McDonald's and like, like Burger King. Burger King, yeah, and things Starbucks. Like that. Exactly. So that's one thing I actually didn't know that meal plan does work in like um like the hub and different places like that. I did not know that. And I think that plays a huge factor. So it's like, oh, so I'm paying for all this money to get a meal plan, and it's not like I'm eating in the dining halls where there's healthy choices. You're telling me I could also eat at Burger King. I could also, you know, get Starbucks. I could also get Panda mm -hmm. Express. So it's like you abuse it. It's quick and fast. But we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to hit my panel with another question, so just stick with us. Welcome back to the 5%. My next question from my guest today is, with school, work, and extracurricular activities, do you think it's possible to get the recommended eight hours of sleep every night in college? Why or why not? First of all, no. I'm going to go ahead and start that off. There we go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because I haven't had eight hours of sleep since high school, freshman year. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I just feel like with credits and everything, no, it's... It's impossible. Yeah, it, there's no way. I know Brown University, they recently did a study and they said 30% of males and 18% of females have insomnia when they're in college. So when you think about it, that's a lot. That's like a high statistic. Mm -hmm. So I think that really has to do with pulling all nighters. You guys know how it is. Yeah. Papers do you procrastinate? You know how it is in college. Mm -hmm. But it just has to do with pulling all nighters, just trying to get your work done, and procrastinating. Yes. So when it comes time to sleep, it's not really time to sleep because you're up doing work and things you couldn't get done during the day. Yeah, I, I like to be kind of the chipper voice and say anything's possible <laughs> if you just believe. <laughs> um, but really, it, I think it comes down to priority. Could you sleep for eight hours? Probably. Mm. But does that mean you're doing homework in the 15 minutes between classes? Does that kind of make your day during the day more stressful to have that time to not stress and sleep at night? I was gonna say like the thing is like you want to be like socially involved too like you want to see your friends you want to make time for them but then you also want to be committed with extracurricular mm -hmm. activities exactly so it's like you have to choose kind of what you want and, and then sleep always, is usually I agree, not and it. there's always something going on on campus oh my goodness like yeah. mm -hmm. there's how how dare Penn State do this to us <laughs> because it's like oh okay I have homework due I have an exam to take by midnight. But I see there's an ice cream social in East. Hmm, I could use some ice cream. Like, you know, like, yeah. so it's like, yeah, it's exactly. always these events going on, especially if you're a freshman, you're gonna wanna get your hands on everything. You're gonna wanna, you know, get involved and stuff, because it goes back to possibly being homesick or, you know, trying to make new friends. It's like you're getting into a whole nother, um, a whole nother lifestyle, being, again, independent. So I totally agree that it's just a lot of, everything going on and de definitely something that I do recommend get involved with organizations and clubs but do not take on more than you can handle. As a freshman something that was beating <laughs> our head it was like get involved get involved uh -huh. get involved but getting involved and being part of an organization is really a great way to kind of slide into that time management mm -hmm. and to say I'm going to see these people that I like to see but I'm going to see them from 6 to 7 30 on Tuesdays and Fridays mm -hmm. and then other times you can actually get work done because you know when you're going to go do it and it's not an off the handle, oh, I don't know, maybe they'll call, maybe they won't. Yeah, but then there are those, like, some organizations are a little too, like, demanding of time. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, um, we're gonna have a general body meeting on Monday and then we're gonna have this on Tuesday and then also I need a social on Friday and like, you know, it's like, yeah. so it's like, oh, <laughs> I don't have classes, <laughs> you know, like, what like so yeah. it's like you start focusing on that but i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a quick break and then when we come back we're gonna have another question for my panel stick with us welcome back to the five percent so my next question for you guys is bar hopping tailgating binge drinking and day longing are all some of the popular activities that take place over penn state holiday weekends 
What advice do you have for students that plan to drink? I know you heard of Hannah Graham over that UVA student. She mm -hmm. went um, to a bar and she ended up missing. You know, she texted her friend, you know, I'm here, I'm lost, I don't know where I am. So I think, and she was alone. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need to do is make sure you're with a good group of friends who will always look out for you and have your back if something were to happen where you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going. So just making sure you're with a good crowd for sure. It kind of comes down, a lot of the times people will say, like, be responsible, and I think that's awful advice. Um, <laughs> no, I think that's terrible advice because you're going to be responsible for whatever you do. The difference is whether or not you're ready to accept that responsibility and you're own right. up to it. You're so, like, right. people are going to go out this weekend, whether it's having a beer with a friend or trying crystal meth. Like, whatever they're going to do, they're going to do it. Well, like, that's really. a left turn. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but, like, people are going to make those decisions. Yeah. The difference is whether or not they're ready to be responsible for the consequences of what they choose mm -hmm. to do. And that's what it comes down to when you talk about things like binge mm -hmm. drinking. But no, away I from that, agree. though, like, you should never feel pressure to drink. So for the small percent I feel, of Pensei who doesn't drink, I feel like you should never feel pressured. And, you know, there's always a good good way to have time to have fun. Yeah, yeah. there's there is a lot of ways to have fun other than drinking, you know, like go out and get with a group of friends and play card games or sometimes I'll see in the hub like um, I'll see groups of friends playing chess and checkers and turn up you don't have to have liquor <laughs> involved yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to turn up with a stack of uno then do it like by all means like you know do what you gotta do but we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and we'll jump into our next question stick with us Welcome back to the 5%. So my next question for my panel is, what are some clubs and organizations on campus that promote health and well-being? Well, I know a good workout. We have a PSU CrossFit, and that's like a fitness and conditioning club. And I'll tell you right now, that'll get you 500, 600 calories if you're really working it out. So that'll, that'll keep you in shape if you go there as much. And Zumba. Oh. Zumba, yeah. If you get you a gym membership, they definitely have Zumba, and that's a good workout as well. See. So. The thing about this gym membership thing, ain't it like fifty dollars oh, a month? Oh, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. semester. That's I mean, true. it's a little better than month, but it's still one hundred and ten a year. Oh, hmm. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you can enroll in the class. Oh. Like they have Zumba. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, they like have the yoga class, for like sure. Actual, yeah. yeah, first year yoga and stuff like that. Yeah. I did see that. But even if you don't want to pay for the membership, I mean, you can get a group of friends and just go for a jog around campus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Start your own little yoga outside of your, your hall, you know, something you could do. Yeah. Cheap. Yeah. So. And I mean, if you're looking to do things for fitness and to get in shape, the important thing is enjoying it, really. Like, as yes. someone who's gone through a lot of different things, you're not going to stick with something you hate. Yeah. I mean, and we have a million different clubs. You can do Taekwondo or recreational skiing or bowling, like, whatever. Just something to eat you out and moving. Wow. Ski? Yeah. That's okay. That's, yeah, right? I'm sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Where could I sign up? Right, right. <laughs> we have Quidditch, too. We, we do, do Quidditch. you know Quidditch. that? Yeah. I don't think I would be good at that one. Are you familiar with Quidditch? Because I'm not familiar with Quidditch. What is Quidditch? It's based off from Harry Potter. You know, have you mm -hmm. ever seen them with brooms flying around? Brooms. So what you're yeah. saying is there's an organization on campus that flies around in brooms? On the floor, though. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, floor, like... <laughs> When's their information? I'm gonna have to go check them out. You should. Bring my own broom. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> Guys, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I can speak, shameless plug, ambitions. Um, dance organizations, definitely, I feel like that's a way to have fun and still be in shape. Um, for those of you who don't know, what ambitions is. Um, Ambitions is a dance organization on campus, and it's basically an open forum for everybody to just come and dance together. Um, every Friday there's a master class. We'll bring in someone and to teach a class, whether it's ballet, hip-hop, tap, jazz, African dancing, um, everything. So there's a lot of dance organizations I know as well um, that are just, su just super fun. And I think that's kind of what um, the issue gets to when people think of working out they think of going to the gym and running on a treadmill it's like it's it's boring and it's not fun and it hurts it hurts me so it's like no I want to get out and if I want to Zumba or you know and dance yeah. and do my thing and there's even twerking classes twerking. actually yeah Whoa. yes okay honey <laughs> Child, let me tell y'all the twerking classes. Yes, and it's these bodies of these women teaching these twerk. Say no more. 
body workout. <laughs> body workout, and you from head to toe. And even swimming, I used to like swimming as a workout because it's a full body workout, and you know, it's do what you gotta do. But definitely, the key to working out is go with friends and have fun. And as long as you have those two factors, you're good and stay in shape. And also buses and stuff like that too, the loops and stuff. So. Walk places, guys. <laughs> but I'm going to take a quick break, and we're going to move to our last question. Stick with us. Welcome back to the 5%. My last question for you guys is, President Obama announced an expansion of military personnel and medical resources to Western Africa to combat the recent outbreak of the Ebola virus. What are some things that we as college students living in a more developed country can do to help those that have been affected with Ebola and are at risk? Well, I mean, we, I think the most you can do for like a family member that's, you know, watching somebody, you know, fight off this virus is just have support for them. So, I mean, even if it's just sending supplies or sending, you know, cards to like a young kid who might have it, it just, you know, it'll like lift up their spirits in like a difficult time for them. And like, I mean, if you're pre-med, Get in the lab, see if you can figure something out, you know what I mean? So just as much as you can do to help, like lend a hand. Mm -hmm. right. And there are a lot of um, one step removed organizations supporting people who can send doctors and personnel. Uh, doctors Without Borders, great organization who can actually put boots on the ground, mm -hmm. actually send out people to help with the situation. And they're someone that you can reach out to pretty easily while you're still here. You don't have to head to West Africa to be able to help mm -hmm. them do something about the situation. Yeah, and going off what they said, it's like the small things that count too. Like even though we may think we might may not be able to contribute as much, anything helps. So I feel like as long as we, you know, send them a card or anything. And I think the most important thing with any virus that's affecting another country, even if it's not ours, is definitely educate each other as students and spread awareness. And just like how we're doing for AIDS, we can do for the Ebola virus and we can, you know, wear ribbons and be just be aware of something is going on. Even though it's not affecting us personally, it's still affecting other humans. So I just feel like we should just educate each other and definitely start these groups and movements um, and just get the word out there that there's something going on in you know, Western Africa and something needs to be done and everybody needs to hear it. Um, but I'm going to take a quick break and when I come back we're going to do some closing statements. Stick with us. Welcome back to The 5%. Well, that concludes our show for tonight. I would definitely like to thank my guests for joining me. Thanks for having us. It was a pleasure. Aww. It was great. Discipline. It was pretty fun. <laughs> pretty fun? <laughs> pretty Jeez, fun. Jeez, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You guys are great, and I definitely learned a lot throughout this episode. So I would definitely like to thank PSN TV and all of you at home for watching. Have a great night. <laughs>